three men in the Bible who never died. Enoch Enoch walked with God after fathering Methuselah for 300 years and had zero sons and daughters. All the days of Enoch were 365 years. Enoch walked with God, and he was no more, for God took him according to the genealogy. Enoch was of the seventh generation. He was the father of Methuselah, the oldest man ever to have lived in the Bible. Amidst a generation that was sinful and malevolent, Enoch walked with God. In chapter 3 of Genesis, we see the story of the fall of humanity, the result of the first voluntary human sin, and all the consequences that come with that sin. In chapter 4 of Genesis, we get the dreadful story of Cain and Abel and witness the first recorded murder in human history. This murder was not between two strangers, it was between two brothers. Four times in chapter 4 of Genesis, the Bible directly refers to the relationship of Cain and Abel as brothers. In chapter 6 of Genesis, we see the wickedness of the world. Genesis 6 verse 5 states, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. However, in chapter 5, we are introduced to a man named Enoch, who walked with God when the world was in its most malevolent state, and all thoughts of humanity were continuously evil. Enoch had the testimony that he pleased God and showed tenacious consistency. Not many believers are consistent in the Christian faith. Some can barely walk with God for a month without being enticed by the world. But Enoch had a remarkable record of consistency in his walk with God. He had communion with God. James 4 verse 8 says, Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Enoch's life is an example for all of us. Beyond the book of Genesis, two other books in the Bible recorded fantastic testimonies about Enoch, Hebrews and Jude. Hebrews 11 verse 5 and 6 say, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Enoch sought God diligently and walked with him. All of us have faith. Enoch had no special advantage over us. He lived in a sinful generation, in a wicked world where God was seen as undesirable. And nevertheless, he chose to seek and walk with God, and you can too. We were made to walk with God. Enoch walked with God, and he was no more, for God took him. The way it is written in Genesis 5 gives the impression that his walk with God continued, so that all believers know that walking and having communion with God in this life is not all there is. But having communion with God in this life and the next is what we have to look forward to. In Hebrews, it is said that he did not see death, God took him directly to heaven. God took a man who pleased him, a man who walked with him, a godly man. He did not die. God took him. Sometimes I wonder about Enoch's family as they looked into the distance with astonishment and admiration for where Enoch went. Enoch is a man who never died. Death did not take him, but the Lord himself took him. What a privilege. Elijah, Elijah was a prophet of God like no other. His name means Jehovah is my God or the Lord is my God. He was a Tishbite as we see in 1 Kings 17 verse 1. He emerged during a turbulent season in Israel's history when the nation turned away from the Lord to worship Baal. It was the time when Ahab, the king of Israel, formed an alliance with Sidon by marrying their princess Jezebel. Elijah's mission was to restore the Israelites to the one true God and he fulfilled that mission before being taken to heaven. Moses represents the law and Elijah represents the prophets and what a prophet Elijah was. Elijah contested the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel, the contest that Elijah used to prove that Jehovah is God. The story of Elijah is inspiring because he publicly stood for the God of Israel as a lone man, even though he was outnumbered by his earthly opponents. In 1 Kings 18 verses 21 and 22 it is stated, and Elijah came to all the people and said, How long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him, but if Baal, follow him. But the people answered him not a word. 
Then Elijah said to the people, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. He challenged the prophets of Baal and took them to Mount Carmel. Elijah proposed a test between God and Baal before 450 men who hated him. Elijah stood up and proclaimed to these worshipers of Baal, Call on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord and the God who answers by fire. He is God. So the prophets of Baal prayed and prayed for fire from their God, but there was none. Then Elijah prepared his altar, prayed, and the result was that the Lord answered with fire. 1 Kings 18 verses 38 to 40 describe the outcome. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust, and it licked up the water that was in the trench. Now when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. And Elijah said to them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Do not let one of them escape. So they seized them, and Elijah took them down to the brook Kishon and executed them there. Elijah was a prophet like no other. He made the rain cease for three and a half years, as recorded in 1 Kings 17, verse 1. He was fed by ravens. Imagine a raven feeding a human being. Elijah raised the dead in 1 Kings 17. He called down rain from the sky and ended the drought in 1 Kings 18. He pronounced judgment on Jezebel, the wicked queen. He called down fire that consumed the first captain and all his men, and then the second captain and his men in 2 Kings 1. He divided the waters of a river so he could cross on dry land in 2 Kings 2 verse 8. James 5 verse 17 states, Elijah was a man, subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Elijah's life was full of turmoil. The Bible describes him as a man with a nature like ours. Sometimes he was bold and decisive, and at other times he was fearful and hesitant. This should encourage us because it shows that God uses ordinary common people despite all the miracles Elijah performed. He is still described as a man with a nature like ours. God answers the prayers of ordinary common people. We don't need to be specially spiritual for God to answer our prayers. Elijah had all the frailties that we have. On the day God took Elijah from the earth, Elisha followed him and received a double portion of his anointing. 2 Kings 2 verse 11 describes the extraordinary departure of Elijah from the earth. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that behold, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Unlike Enoch, Elijah's transition to heaven was witnessed by Elisha. He did not experience death. Instead, he was taken to glory without experiencing death, ascending in chariots of fire. The third individual who never experienced conventional death is the Lord Jesus Christ. Unlike Enoch and Elijah, Jesus had victory over death. David prophesied in Psalm 16, verse 10, that Jesus would not experience the decomposition of human flesh after death. For you will not leave my soul in Sheol, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. Everything about Jesus' life was prophesied, and he came to fulfill these prophecies. Jesus' final mission on earth was to reconcile humanity with God through the shedding of his blood. The sin that caused enmity between God and man was what Jesus came to purge. The angel Gabriel confirmed this in Matthew 1, 1 verse, and she will bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Unlike Enoch and Elijah, Jesus died. He did not faint. He died the death of all deaths. Jesus was not killed. No one can kill God. He willingly gave his life when it was time for him to offer his life as a sacrifice for sin. He accepted death while praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus surrendered to the will of God to prove death. Jesus died and was resurrected on the third day. Many were resurrected from the dead in the Bible. The widow's son in Zarephath, Jairus' daughter, Lazarus, Eutychus. But all these individuals eventually died again. Being resurrected from the dead is a temporary victory over death. However, being resurrected from the dead as Jesus did is a permanent victory over death. 
Revelation 1 verses 17 and 18 speak of this eternal triumph. Do not be afraid, I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Jesus Christ is the living one from whom all life flows. He declared, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the bread of life. I am the living water. I am the water of life. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. In him we live, move, and have our being. The narratives of Enoch, Elijah, and Jesus Christ are more than mere ancient stories. They are powerful testimonies of faith, miracles, and fulfilled divine promises. Enoch and Elijah, in their exceptional earthly journeys, demonstrated an intimate and constant communion with God, underscoring the possibility of a deep relationship between the Creator and His creations. They were taken to heaven without experiencing death, marking their names as symbols of faith and hope. However, the story of Jesus Christ, see the corruption. Everything about the life of Jesus was prophesied, and He came to fulfill these prophecies. The final mission of Jesus on earth was to reconcile humanity with God through the shedding of His blood. The sin that brought enmity between God and man was what Jesus came to cleanse the angel. Gabriel confirmed this in Matthew 1 verse 21. She will give birth to a son, and you shall name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins, unlike Enoch and Elijah. Jesus died, he did not faint, he died. The death of all deaths, Jesus was not killed. No one can kill God. He willingly gave his life when the time came for him to offer his life as a sacrifice for sin. He accepted death while praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus surrendered to the will of God to experience death. Jesus died and was resurrected on the third day many were raised from the dead in the Bible. The son of a widow in Zarephath, Jairus' daughter Lazarus Eutychus, but all these individuals eventually did again. Being raised from the dead is a temporary victory over death, however, being resurrected from the dead, as Jesus did, is a permanent victory over death, Revelation 1, verses 17 and 18. Speak of this eternal triumph, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, I am the one who lives. I was dead, but look, I am alive forevermore, amen, and I have the keys of death and Hades. Jesus Christ is the living one from whom all life flows. He declared, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the bread of life. I am the source of living water. I am the water of life. I came so that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even though he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die in him. We live, move, and exist the narratives of Enoch, Elijah Hand. Jesus Christ are more than mere ancient stories. They are powerful testimonies of fulfilled divine miracles and promises. Enoch and Elijah in their earthly journeys demonstrated an intimate and constant communion with God, underscoring the possibility of a deep relationship between the Creator and His creatures. They were taken to heaven without experiencing death, marking their names as symbols of faith and hope. However, the story of Jesus Christ transcends all offering, not only an example of holy living, but also the promise of 